What's up sa inyo mga pamangkikers? Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Eat, Sleep, Breathe Football wherein we're still trying to cope up with the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown itself. Uh, hope na okay lang kayo sa inyong mga tahanan or kung nasaan man kayo. Um, especially mga nasa Metro Manila, ingat-ingat, medyo maulan sa paligid. Uh, dito sa Valenzuela, umuulan. Uh, before we start with the show, uh, just quick shout out sa mga nasa... Livestream na agad, Bill Pakatang, uh, Nicole John Londerio, um, at marami pang iba. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagtutok. Um, marami na tayong balita na narinig or nakahalap regarding sa resumption ng football. And um, ito, um, as a start of our show, uh, magbigay muna tayo ng ilang updates sa footballing world. Uh, starting off with the um, Korean Football League. Nag-start na sila nung June, or sorry, nag-start na sila nung uh, last Saturday, wherein um, nanalo ang ang defending champions, John Book Motors, won four goals or a goal to nil over Suwon Samsung Blue Blue Wings. Uh, goal na yan ang galing kay Lee Dong-guk. 41-year-old player who came off the bench after may ma-red card sa kanila and yun. So, um, Nakita natin na nag-start na agad yung K-League at uh, eto Asia to so uh, it gives hope sa atin na nasa Southeast Asia na may chance na sooner or later mag-resume ang football um, events dito. Um, also, we have updates from Bundesliga. Despite uh, teams in Division 2 or a team in Division 2 being in quarantine, uh, start na rin ang kanilang league into uh, May 16 as you can see. Uh, andyan ang match days nila. It's a big one uh, right away with um, uh, by uh, Borussia Dortmund against uh, Schalke sa kanilang opening fixture or res- uh, resumption ng Bundesliga. And uh, meron din tayong mga makakasama pa or mababalitaan pa with regard to um, another top league. Ang Serie A ay magbabalik na rin ng May 16. Inaayos na lang nila kanilang guidelines in terms of how they will resume the league. But nevertheless, nag-start ng individual trainings ng uh, squads like um, Atalanta, uh, Juventus, and other Serie A teams. Moving over to La Liga, ang mga uh, clubs naman sa La Liga ay nagko-conduct na ng testing sa mga players nila and also conduct, uh, conducting their individual training. Uh, nag-start na rin sila and hopefully mag-start ang league nila by June, uh, mid-June ang sabi ng uh, Spanish Football Federation. So may nadagdag sa ating grupo ang ating graphics master na si Sir Saya, Haruda ng Saya Graphics. Uh, feeling ko uh, bantay-bantay lang muna si Sir Saya sa atin. Nevertheless, uh, thank you for... Yon. Thank you for all the graphics na binibigay mo sa amin. And of course, kay Sedelf din sa CPT uh, Crossover Podcast. Shoutout kay Sir Sedelf Tupas na naging guest namin last week. So, uh, ayun. Um, before we head into a more bigger news, um, ayun, nakita na natin si Sir Saya na nakaseres pa. Wow! <laughs> Ayos ah. Parang galing sa management or sa ano yan ha? Kung kanino yan ha? <laughs> So, ayun, di nag-start na tayo ng, or nagkaroon na tayo ng updates regarding the um, uh, league uh, resumption. Sir Aaron, uh, talking about the resumption of the K-League, ano sa tingin mo yung magiging impact nito sa decision-making ng mga governing bodies of football dito sa Southeast Asia? Maybe it will result to parang practice sharing, uh, virtually practice sharing for other leagues. Ah, okay, so kung kaya ng K-League, edi susundin ng ng pattern ng iba't ibang mga liga, maaaring ganun din yung nagiging observation ng ating uh, local uh, leagues or professional leagues dito, which is yung uh, PFL. And uh, sa iyo naman, Jan, nung nag-start kasi ang K-League, or nung nag-resume, o oh, yan nga, nag-start ang K-League, um, naririnig ko sa background na may fans, or siguro sa speakers, sa stadium, eh, meron mga fans, or yung live uh, audio dati ng fans. Ano sa tingin mo naman yung magiging impact nito when it comes to the viewership ng mga football fans in general? Uh, well, since na uh, siguro hindi pa nila ano, na-allow yung fans na pumunta ng stadium, uh, that would really make an impact, especially sa, ano, sa mga 
fans and ultras uh, nila so to speak with uh, iba kasi yung ano yung yung feeling na doon kami sumunod mm. kaysa sa TV lang so siguro uh, uh, big adjustment para sa fans nila and uh, probably uh, as days or weeks go by meron naman siguro ang contingency plan yung yung liga nila on how to like uh, have fans in the stadium siguro mm. ano lang mga pakonti-konti lang and hopefully mm. ano uh, manumbalik sa normal yung ano yung flow ng ng, ng fans stadium yun thank you so much sa uh, views and opinions sir Aaron and John now uh, before we continue with uh, our interview or before we continue with uh, the part wherein we're gonna talk to another player ng Ascals is we're just gonna listen or yeah we're just gonna listen into the uh, interview between Sir Aaron Bayato of Radio Pilipinas Dos and uh, the PFF president Sir Nonong Araneta we give credits to Radio Pilipinas Dos for this clip so uh, pakinggan muna natin ang kanilang sinabi Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat Football Connection po dito sa Radio Pilipinas Dos 918 kHz Aaron Bayato na miss namin kayo pero marami salamat pa rin po sa inyong pagtangkilik po dito sa Philippine Broadcasting Service sa aming mga stations sa uh, uh, nationwide at uh, sa pbsradio.ph very privileged uh, with us uh, today the president of the Philippine Football Federation walang iba kundi si Mr. Nonong Araneta Sir Nong uh, magandang hapon po sa inyo uh, magandang hapon din uh, Aaron sa kasalat na nakikinig sa iyo sa sa Radio Pilipinas it's always uh, uh, good to to be back with Radio Pilipinas Thank you, sir. And uh, always a pleasure and privilege na makadaupang palad po namin kayo. So, sir, uh, with the, uh, of course, a lot of uncertainty happening sa larangan ng sports, yung mga ibang professional leagues natin sa iba't ibang sports like uh, yung PBA, yung PBL, PSL. On the part naman po sa football, yung uh, sinusundan natin Philippines Football League at yung uh, PFF uh, Women's League po natin, ano po ang... Um, magiging uh, i-expect nating hakbangin po ng uh, ating NSA sa football kung sakaling ma-downgrade po ties to GCQ and eventually ma-up ma-lift din po yung GCQ sir. Uh, right now ang binabalak namin talaga dun sa PFL or sa mga liga is that uh, we create an ad hoc committee you know para ma-resolve yung mga issues uh, regarding yung sa health issues sa mga uh, safety protocols uh bago magsimula ang liga you know because uh, before the league uh, dapat may mga practice muna yan mm-hmm. uh kaya nangyayari sa Europe i think uh, before they start the league may one month of preparation muna and they're creating uh, protocols already for for that so nag-usap kami ni Coco Torre who is our uh, chairman uh, uh, siya yung head ng department ng uh, competitions to create a committee uh, involving the clubs and uh, medical experts mm-hmm. and also with, uh, to liaise with the uh, uh, LGUs because right now ang nakikita namin pwedeng laruan lang ngayon uh, yung sabi nga ng PSC yung sa government uh, ano ng under PSC mukhang, mukhang malabo no mm-hmm. ang ipagpagamit ng Rizal uh, so at uh, Carmona okay. and uh, Binyan, you know. So with that in mind, uh, nag, uh, sabi ko nga kay Coco na mag, ano tayo, maging proactive uh, para bago mag-umpisa yung, bago mag, uh, let's say, mag-ease ease up na yung lockdown. Okay. Then if the government will allow, of course, it all depends on the government. No, But uh, if we can present to the government kung ano yung mga protocols na dapat namin to follow, para to really uh, make sure that safety of the players are uh, comes first and uh, so yun ang napag-usapan muna namin na protocol uh, in the same way then yung sa mga kasi meron tayong binabalak na under 13 under 15 under 17 mm. uh, to also kasi ang head ng uh, uh, PFF uh, committee namin dyan. Chairman is um, Vice Mayor Pinyol. So I told also Coco to coordinate with uh, Vice Mayor Pinyol. Uh, kung paano, kasi parang ano yan eh, uh, home in a way ang format ng mga liga namin ngayon. Uh, Doon sa youth competitions namin. So ang mangyayari dyan is how do we uh, go about this no? with the uh, existing uh, um, government regulations. So uh, yun ang 
titingnan pa kung paano ang gagawin no? so para at least kung mag approve ang gobyerno natin na pwede oh pwede yung football then we have already we can present to them already that you know these are the things that we are supposed to do to mm-hmm. ensure that the safety but definitely wala mo nang fund siguro Mm-hmm. We do understand, uh, Mr. Nonong. And uh, finally, uh, Sir Nonong, uh, paano naman po yung sa pagdating sa national matters or yung national team po natin, uh, ano na po mga naging, may naging abiso na po ba ang uh, FIFA and uh, AFC as well upon the possible resumption? Yes, sir, go ahead. The World Cup qualifier namin na games for uh, March and June. Uh, I think it, uh, ang, ang sabi is that it will be in October, na uh, Windows, and November. Mm-hmm. No. So yun ang ang advice ng AFC. Ang ang inaano naman namin ngayon is the Suzuki Cup. Mm-hmm. No, which will start supposed to be in November. So kung maging maging conflict yon sa World Cup qualifier, then we can yung na parang na, na pag ano namin with the sponsors is that matuloy na yung Suzuki, then we can schedule it in December. Mm-hmm. And probably the championship will be in January. Th- those are the different scenarios. Mm-hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, pang habo na lang po, as, is it the same with uh, ASEAN Women's Championship? Uh, yes. Uh, at, at the moment, lahat ng competitions sa ASEAN are cancelled. So we're waiting for the you know uh, go signal from AFC when when we can start. Or sa mga East country naman kasi iba-iba ang situation. So... By probably by September yan or October. So yun, narinig natin ang panig ni Sir Nonong Araneta after that interview with Sir Aaron Bayato. Um, guys, ito yung sinasabi natin na once we start seeing yung uh, movement ng nasa paligid natin is mag-start na rin mag up ng solution ang ating federation. Now, Sir Aaron, from that interview with uh, Sir Nonong Araneta, ano yung pwede nating maging takeaway as, siguro as people in the media in terms of magiging action plan ng uh, PFF and PFL sa darating na competitions nila? Well, actually, maganda yung naging uh, pagpaplan na nila that they're anticipating on what to do as soon as malif yung GCQ. Take note, mga kaibigan, GCQ, ha, hindi yung modified. Kasi as soon as wala na yung mga quarantine stuff, that's the time we can resume uh, sporting activities. Para pag as soon as uh, sinabi ni national government, okay, wala nang quarantine, uh, work action kagad itong ating uh, Philippine Football Federation para sa yung committee na tinatawag to ensure yung uh, safety at health ng mga players and club sa Philippines Football League at sa Women's League natin. And at the same time, hindi magkakaroon ng parang uh, backlog at kalituhan para maging uh, maayos yung pag-streamline or pag-scale ng kung ano mga, mga protocols na gagawin para as soon as mag-restart yung league, hindi siya kumbaga magkakaroon ng uh, confusion or parang uh, chaotic, hindi magiging chaotic yung uh, dating. Siyempre kasi yan dahil magpapractice pa yung mga players natin. So yung maayos yung orderly na pagpaplano ng um, NSA natin is uh, very important and it's uh, I think that uh, they're planning well. Um, we're going to see how it's going to be executed as soon as the GCQ has been lifted in hopefully in two to three months. Yeah. So, uh, ang akin naman siguro um, perspective ko as an analyst for that mm-hmm. or siguro ibigay na rin natin yung magiging perspective ng players. These players, they are itching to play. Atat na atat na sila maglaro. Uh, as you can see or as you can notice sa mm-hmm. uh, mga social media accounts nila, um, ang drills nila is towards football or talagang miss na miss na nila yung football. If there's a chance that they will play FIFA, they will play FIFA. They will use that as an avenue mm-hmm. to um, take away yung boredom na na experience nila or yung pagkamis nila sa football. Um, we actually have uh, a question here na bakit hindi na lang daw muna uh, ibang klaseng football like futsal. I mean, yes, that's a great plan. However, it's still a contact sport at the end of the day. Um, ang alam natin, uh, under GCQ or actually under modified ECQ, um, there are some some sports na inalaw na which is non-contact sports or uh, sort of individual sports. Pero itong uh, futsal or football, it's still in the limbo 
uh, even during the GCQ kasi yun nga bawal nga yung contact sports and um, siguro we can take notes from the K League the uh, uh, Bundesliga which will start this weekend kung ano yung ginagawa nila or kung ano yung gagawin nila para um, mag-push through yung league para makita natin yung magiging following nila now in terms of uh, fan support or perspective ng fans uh, on say um so thinking mo will it still help na magkaroon pa ng enough time uh, during the GCQ period we have programs like the Eat Sleep Breathe Football podcast or the CPT pro- uh, uh, crossover podcast do you think it will help sa mga uh, football fans or sa mga baguhan na manonood ng football para magkaroon pa sila ng sapat na kaalaman before the start of the league definitely na ano malaking tulong talaga yan guys ano alam naman natin na majority siguro ng mga fans not really uh, going to the to the live games so with this kind of uh, shows like what we're doing uh, at home uh, cell phone internet lang we are educating them kahit papano on how the the beautiful sport works ano yung mga dapat abangan ano yung mga kailangan natin ano malaman tungkol sa sport uh, it's a good it's a good ano venue na para at least ma-educate yung mga fans tsaka yung mga, especially yung mga baguang fans Ayan, thank you so much dun sa thought na yun. Now, um, since napag-usapan na rin natin to and uh, we still have enough time to have quite a conversation, um, eto, i- i- ilalabas na natin yung unsung hero na sinabi ni Sir Sedev Tupas nung nakaraang podcast. Uh, kasi karamihan sa inyo, akala nyo ganun lang kadali yung, yung paggawa ng kung ano-ano man. Ako, ako, personally, alam ko mahirap siya eh. Alam ko mahirap siya. Kaya, Sabi ko sa kanya, kung, kung kayang ilabas, go lang, pero kung wala, okay lang din. Uh, we call on Saya of Saya Graphics. Brother, first and foremost, thank you so much. Kasi um, without you, siguro hindi ko kayang gawin itong mga nandito na nakikita ng viewers natin. But just to uh, share them, yung siguro yung experience or um, knowledge, ano bang kailangan uh, or, or bakit? Siguro, aside from magtrabaho mo to, di ba? Um, is this out of passion na lang din na ginagawa mo yung mga gantong bagay for the likes of Sedelf Tupas and Tito J? So, basically, ano eh, nang part-time job ko na kasi to. Nang full-time ako na, ano, na civil engineering student. Hmm. So, ginagawa ko itong ano, way para, you know, magka-income din. Tapos, Ano yung nagsimula ako sa Ultra Series? <laughs> Doon talaga ako nagsimula. Nag-edit sa ah. Ultra Series talaga. <laughs> then, doon ako nag-start. Nag, ano ba ako? Power, PowerPoint pa nun gamit ko eh. PowerPoint. Hindi <laughs> pa ako marunong mag, <laughs> mag-photoshop. So, yun lang. Siguro, advice ko lang sa mga ano, aspiring graphic artists. Uh, Mag-YouTube lang. Search lang sa mga ways kung paano mapagaling yung mga edit nyo. Ganun. Kasi... Wala rin kumain ng tour sa akin ng YouTube lang lahat kasi tapos Google yun yun na yun na talaga. Ayun. So the reason why we we just brought in Saya sa ating podcast today is yun nga gusto lang naming malaman ninyo na itong mga tao na nasa likod ng graphics na nakikita nyo is hindi biro yung mga ginawa nila. Galing na nga sa kanya pinag-aralan niya to ng siya, siya lang and uh, we really give thanks sa mga kagaya ni Saya na nagbibigay ng magagandang graphics or something na na share natin na kunwari may magandang picture na nilabas si Saya na picture ni Messi or picture ni Balotelli or kung sino mang football player share mo agad yan panigurado makikita yan ng ibang fans or kung sino man na nakatutok so kung sino man sa inyo interesado sa mga works ni Saya punta kay sa page niya which is Saya Graphics um, PM nyo siya doon kung may mga gusto kayong pagawa sa kanya pagawa nyo lang abusuhin nyo lang siya <laughs> Pero abusuhin nyo sa tamang halaga. <laughs> yun yun. Um, kasi at the end of the day, yun nga, part-time job nyo to. And uh, ako, personally, atas kamay ako sa'yo, saludo ako sa'yo, Saya. And uh, alam mo na, thank you, thank you. under the thank you, table man. na lang yung mga usapan natin. So, <laughs> sa pagbabalik natin, we will be having, um, we can say, probably the bad boy sa pananaw or sa paningin ng mga kapitbahay nating 
kung sino man. We'll have Justin Baas sa pagbabalik ng Eat Sleep Breathe Football. All right, so now we have Justin Bass here with us. Uh, Justin, uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to have you on our show. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm doing good as well. Um, I believe you're currently in uh, Netherlands, right? Yes, yes, I am. All right, and uh, how how are you coping up uh, as of the moment? I believe uh, the Dutch league have canceled, so um, there are you know reserve games as well that have been suspended or canceled. Uh, how are you currently coping up? Yes, that's true. Um, I'm training every day, um, two times a day. So in the morning I do strength for myself, and in the evening I'm just running or jogging. So and now we can also train with Asset Alkmaar, um, but with a small group. And with the with the distance between each other, but we can train. But it's only three times in a week for one hour. But yeah, it's still good. So basically, the training sessions that you're having in AZ Akmar, it's it's like um, there are like five or six people of you in one football field, but you're spread out in the entire pitch, right? Yeah. I yes. See. Yes. I see. So yeah, um, that's really good that you're still, or that you still have, uh, you know, um, a way for you to um, to be in training and to, to be in uh, great physical condition yourself. Um, yes. For sure, you have relatives here in the Philippines. Uh, how how are they doing right now? Or how are you be able to uh, reach out to them? Um, they're doing good. So, of course, I do also the video chat with them. And yeah, they're still fine. They're still okay. So yeah, I'm happy for that. And I hope your family are also safe as well. Yeah, we're really happy to hear that your family is safe. Um, Justin, uh, before I head into my questions, I would like to ask the gentleman that I have here. Um, Sir Aaron, uh, questions that you do have for Justin while I still compose myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Justin. Uh, Aaron here from uh, RP2. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Um, before asking any questions, I just I would just like to personally uh, thank you for uh, representing our team, uh, for playing for our uh, Philippine national team, both in the under-22 and in the our senior team. We do appreciate it. And uh, you rocked up there in the field. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, going to my uh, first, first question, uh, you were privileged and uh, to have a chance to play for our under-22 and our senior team. Could you talk about the uh, camaraderie that you had with the uh, under-22, specifically for during the uh, Southeast Asian Games and during the uh, World Cup qualifiers? But can you repeat it again? Uh, okay. Network, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you played for under-22 and the senior team. Uh, could you talk about your camaraderie with uh, your teammates? from both squad, uh, any distinctive uh, factors that you observed uh, during your stints with the national teams of under-22 and the senior team as well? Yeah, the first time when I went to the first team was against Syria, um, the mm -hmm. Syria camp. And the, yeah, I came there as the, yeah, the new boy, so it was all new for me. But yeah, they were, they were nice to me and they were just human and they were so very nice to mankind to me. So yeah, I feel just like home. It was the same with the under 22. It's just the same. So it, it feels like family for me. And yeah, I'm very happy to be there. Mm -hmm. Any uh, particular players that uh, you consider the closest uh, amongst the group, either on the under 23 or rather under 22 or the seniors? What do you mean? Uh, do you have any close friends uh, from your oh, yeah. Uh, team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
of course, my roommate was uh, Eric Galantes uh, with the first team, and I've uh, uh, Edison is a good friend of me, and also uh, Quincy Kamarat and uh, Kenoa. So other players, other young boys, are we just friends with each other. So that's nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, before uh, moving to uh, to our colleague uh, Sir Jan, um, ever since when you were young, you really uh, preferred to play football. Yeah, yes, I did because. In the Netherlands, football is the number one sport. So when I was a young child, I always wanted to be become a professional soccer player. So that was always my dream. Mm -hmm. All right, great stuff, Justin. Thank you. Great stuff out there, Justin. Now, before I head into my questions as well, we have some fans asking you questions. Let's start off with the questions uh, from Jan's group. Uh, Jan, what are the questions that you got there uh, from your friends? Okay, uh, uh, the first question is, um, do you have any like uh, offers uh, from the Philippines to play professionally here? Or... Yeah, I do got some <laughs> offers, but I just want to keep it private, you know? So um, yeah, I do have some options, but also other countries and we will see what the future brings me. And also uh, one question from uh, Sir Ted Ko. Uh, Fuji Pipes, Negros. Mm -hmm. He said that, when are you coming to Ferris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know, you never know, so yeah. I don't yeah. know. Uh, it will be great, maybe, be... maybe in the future I will play for Ferris, but um, yeah, we're but, not sure, ooh. it's just in the future, mm. maybe. Mm. Uh, last, last question, uh, a more serious one. Um, how does it uh, feel playing in the senior squad during the World Cup qualifiers, especially during uh, the Syria game and in the China game. How does it feel? Uh, what yeah. did you feel about? Feeling very proud, very, very proud because um, I love to play for the Filipino uh, for the Filipino flag, and yeah, it just makes me happy. It just makes me proud. So I do it for you. I do it for myself, for my family, but especially for all the Filipino people. So I work hard for them. So it feels very good. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. All right. Now we have another question here from one of our fans in our Facebook page. Brian Dave Guerravelo asked you, um, are you in the future, because we know that you've already invested yourself as a player in the Philippine Ascos, and um, you said yourself that you will uh, just see how things will go. Maybe you'll find your way here in the Philippines. He asked you, is there a way or are you open to any possibilities of you sponsoring a small club here in the Philippines? To be honest, I'm not that, <laughs> that rich right now. So <laughs> maybe, in the, maybe in the near future, if I got enough money, um, of course, I'm always helping the people, the Filipino people. Also, when I go there to my uh, to my Lola, I, I give some candies, give some T-shirts as well to the to the uh, to the kids on the on the street. So, yeah, maybe in the future, but for not for now, <laughs> I'm just still young, you know. I haven't that much money, but if I'm there in the future, hopefully I can do that. Yeah, with the age that you actually have right now, I can personally say that you're one of the biggest prospects of the Philippine Ascals in terms of playing football or playing for the national team. We've seen you play in different roles. Um, I think the first time that Scott Cooper have used you in the Syria game, you were placed as a midfielder or defensive midfielder that time. And then you were given a different role um, uh, during the Guam game and the entirety of the um, of the uh, Southeast Asian Games in the under-22 squad. Now, um, what can you say or on which position are you most comfortable playing in? Are you comfortable in playing up front in the attack or are, are you more of um, a defensive or a holding midfielder yourself? I'm just a midfielder who likes to attack and also defense as well. Just a box-to-box -box midfielder so I can also play in defense, also can play forward. So, yeah, I think the midfield is for me is for me as a person is perfect because I can defend and attack, but yeah, it doesn't matter for me. If I'm playing defense, I will do my best on defense. If I'm playing in attack, I will do my best. I will always do my best. So yeah. 
Yeah, that's really great to hear. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe you played for the under 15 or the under 16 um, national squad of Netherlands. Was there any chance True. that you have uh, bumped shoulders with the likes of uh, Frankie or uh, Frankie De Jong or uh, Matis De Ligt? Yeah, I've, I've played against Matthijs de Ligt, so yeah, of course, you never know. In the youth, I've played against uh, many good players, uh, mm. Matthijs de Ligt, uh, Justin Kluivert, uh, and many more. So, yeah, you never know. How, There's always a chance. Always. How, how does it feel that you're that you previously bumped shoulders with these players who are now playing in Eredivisie, um, like plying their trades in the top uh, top flight football how does it feel for your do you, do you see yourself as well um, as a player coming up the ranks and uh, probably making your first team appearance for AZ Akmar yeah true of course I play them and now they are going to uh, like Matthias Lech is now playing for Juventus and uh, yeah, very happy to play I played against him and sometimes we beat them as well so yeah the message of course very proud so yeah, hopefully I can also reach that, um, no, reach reach the top or like that. All right. Now talking about your international duties for the Philippines, um, most of the players that we have here, or most of the players that started playing for the Philippines, were actually scouted abroad. Uh, like Phil and James Young husband were scouted from the Chelsea reserves team. Uh, Neil Etheridge from uh, from England as well. Um, how did how did the people from the federation approach you or how uh, did they told you that hey, you're going to play with the Philippines? So I was there just on holiday with my mom mm -hmm. and then uh, Dan Palami, he came in, in, in touch with me. So we had uh, a conversation. So we talked with each other with also Scott Gohan, uh, uh, coach, coach Gohan, he was, he was there. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we were just talking, and they knew everything about me, so about my about my type of playing, about as at all my about my situation. And they were just talking and talking. And then, first of all, I just only want to play for the under 22 for the Sea Games mm -hmm. because that was my mission. And then they and then I had the call up from the first team, and of course I was very proud with the, with the call for the first team. And yeah, you can say no about the uh, to the first team, so yeah, I joined there and I did my thing. Yeah, and uh, I believe you were also a pivotal part of um, Coach Goran Milojevic's side, uh, which drew against China the last uh, fixture that the Philippine Ascals had before the lockdown. Um, talk us through the emotions that were running through you, or how did you feel about that game against China, wherein we were able to grab a point and uh, be level on second place in the World Cup qualifiers? Uh, mixed feelings. I feel I feel good because we draw against China, but also I was disappointed because I was thinking we can beat China. So I was just with mixed feelings. I was happy with the draw, but also a bit disappointed that we're not you know, having the win. So that was just a bit mixed feelings. And uh, now moving over to the under-22 side, you mentioned that this was your mission when you uh, went on a holiday here in the Philippines. You decided that SEA Games is just around the corner and you feel like you want to play for the country in the SEA Games. Now, yeah. um, different from the senior team, you had the bigger role as you know, probably the midfield general for the Philippines under-22. And uh, you actually for, uh, scored your first goal in the Southeast Asian Games, or your first goal for the Philippines. How did you feel about that goal? It was, I think, a rocket of a shot that you have pulled out there. <laughs> yeah, of course, it was, uh, it was a nice goal. And uh, the stands, everyone was very happy. They was just shouting and uh, it, was, it was crazy. And I saw my family up there in the stands. So, yeah, it makes me proud. To score in front of them and um, of course we will never forget that game against uh, Malaysia everyone here in the panel <laughs> and everyone watching us will never forget that game not only because we won that game uh, which resembles our win over them in the 1991 <laughs> Southeast Asian Games but with the we can say quite a, a controversy that you uh, or that people um, have uh, filled in that situation um, I know that this has been asked uh, from you before um, right when that happened but can you talk us through that 
time when you were shaking hands or you were you know shaking hands with the Malaysian squad and they felt like it's kind of a rude thing that you have done yeah first of all the the mess they were just disrespecting us in the pitch so it was not like I don't not respect them but mm -hmm. after the game it was just like we won and I was just like doing this you know like all right we won we won we won we won and it doesn't matter about them but um yeah of course on karma it looks like heavier and, the, and also the media is making it bigger and bigger and bigger but it's just a small thing because we're staying in the same hotel and also in the same hotel i was standing there alone with i think 12 players from them in the elevator and they were just pointing on the ground and don't say anything <laughs> ab uh, uh, about me you know and after the game they were just like screaming to me like what do you do you're so rude and uh, if i see you in the hotel i would do this and that but yeah I still respect them and I think they respect me as well and I'm just still good, you know, about did, them. Did you feel like there was a time that, um, you know, they, they're saying stuff to you um, when you were on the field? Did, did you feel uh, threatened when you were in the hotel, when you saw those 12 players? No, or no, no. Not at all? Of course not. No. <laughs> it's just big talks, you know. After the pitch, they're just doing nothing and stuff, so, mm. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I still respect them, and mm -hmm. I think they will also respect me as well. Because if I disrespect them or they will disrespect me, they will have a fight in the hotel. That's what I'm thinking about. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, just I, yeah, that's what I say. I just respect them. They will respect me. It was just that yeah, just happened. We won, they lose. So yeah. And uh, right before that happened, um, everyone was in delirium inside the Rizal Memorial Stadium, as you can tell. We saw you all the way from, from the middle of the pitch. You have run <laughs> all the way to the fans in the Ultras Filipinas. Can, can you tell us how did you feel about the support that the Filipino fans have given you? Especially that you have taken a more especially bigger role. Game. Especially that game, yeah. yeah. Especially, especially that game, it was it was crazy. The Filipinos, they were screaming all the time. They were crazy. So we won also because of them, you know. So I, I feel like, okay, I have to thank them. First, I, I told anybody else, come, we have to thank them. Then he said, yeah, later, first party. I said, no, no, we have to thank them. So I just run to the, to the people and go crazy. And then they were just cheering, cheering and the stands. Yeah, that's yeah. very nice. Yeah, I, I was actually there. I, I was part of the group uh, when you ran over to us and um, we were just like in awe because we, we are used to the players after their handshake with the, with the opponents or after their team talk or their small team talk. They have this um, time that they come to the supporters. But after the final whistle has been blown, you were the very first person who approached uh, the ultra side and we really felt the respect that you had for us. So uh, we really want to thank you for that. Now, um, in no, terms... Thank you, guys. No thank worries. In, in terms of your development as a player, not only for the uh, the Academy of AZ Akmar, but also in terms of the national team, um, in most recent re uh, interviews with Scott Cooper, he mentioned that he wants the Philippines to be at their uh, top shape once the... Um, once the games resume, um, and um, they have this uh, program called the Askels Development Team, where in uh, players um, under the age of 22 or something are playing for a football club here in the Philippines, or they will be playing in the Philippines Football League. Was there ever a time that uh, boss Dan Palami or coach Scott Cooper asked uh, if you can join in the team, or they just told you to just keep your um, your time with AZ Akmar? Yeah, they they did, but that's something between me and them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. We're not going guys. <laughs> no, no problem. We're not gonna get into the detail because we have some fans as well asking if if you were approached or if you are gonna be playing for the ADT um, in the upcoming PFL season. And um, in our opinion, uh, you already have um, let's say a clear spot in the AZ Akmar uh, youth program. So um, instead of probably you joining uh, the ADT right now, it's best for Justin Baas to use that time that he has in Netherlands, uh, prove himself that he's worthy of a starting position in the Philippines as well as the AZ Akmar squad. And we'll never know, we might see a first Filipino player in the um, in the Dutch league, so that's what I can actually say about that move, and that's great thinking as well from uh, a player like you. Um, 
probably heading into the final couple of questions that we have right here for you. Um, what can you say actually about your experience here in the Philippines or playing here in the Philippines? And what can you say about the uh, future of the Philippine football program? I think we're going up. You can also see the games against Syria and China. We're keeping better and better and better. So, yeah, I think we can improve more. Mm -hmm. And I think we will improve more. So, I think if we are being more together, playing more games and develop each other, then I think, yeah, we can be maybe number one in the group in a couple of years, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I think we can be... In Asia, it can be a very, very big country in football. All right. That's really great to hear. And uh, probably your final message to your fans who are watching us right now in the, the live stream. Yeah, I want to do a big, big, big shout out to all my fans who are watching right now. But also, it's not watching right now, but I want to uh, give you a big shout out to all the other all people who support me. So I love you guys. All right. Thank you so much. Justin, thank you so much for giving us thank the time you, and the opportunity to interview you. Once again, that's Justin Bass, uh, midfielder of the Philippine Ascals and AZ Akmar. Uh